of business is a member's business debate on motion 2537 in the name of Brian Whittle on Dune Valley Boxing Club. Uh, the debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would ask members who wish to speak to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Brian Whittle to open the debate. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, during a recent visit to Dalmellington, the Dune Valley Boxing Club was brought to my attention as a really positive influence in the local community. They invited me down for a visit, and given, as you know, uh, that the lift doesn't always go to the top floor where I'm concerned, uh, I decided to bring my training kit with me and take part in the session. Now, I went in with a plan. I joined in with the under-12 age group. But as that great educator, Iron Mike Tyson, once said, everybody has a plan till they get a punch in the chin. And after a shadow boxing session, six by two-minute rounds hitting the pads, followed by circuits, I left the building in a wheelbarrow. I'll just turn this up the right way now, excuse me. <laughs> That'll help. Um, Presiding officer, what the club under the tutelage of head trainer Sam Mullen has achieved for a community that doesn't have its challenges to seek is quite remarkable. With local facility, facilities closing down, he took it upon himself to start the club 13 years ago in a garage and now runs a weight training gym and boxing gym from an industrial unit in the town. To say that it is busy is an understatement. He trains children and young people of all ages, and the club is open all day and evening. Everybody in the community knows about the club. When I arrived, the youngest age group were in training, and I listened to Mr. Mullen drilling into them the importance of healthy eating. And the parents, many of them were next door in the weight training room, working out after dropping their, their children off at the club. The enthusiasm from Sam, the parents, and the youngsters was just so fantastic to see. Presiding officer, although this may be hard to hear for my fellow parliamentarians, the brutal reality is that the members of that club will not listen to any advice we might want to give from this chamber, but they will listen with complete attention to Mr. Mullen because he and his trainee coaches are speaking directly to the members' enthusiasm and aspirations. In these times when we hear about children's increasing inactivity, obesity and poor mental health, we need to recognise local champions in local communities and the impact that they are having that, quite frankly, we as a parliament cannot begin to replicate. The third sector and the volunteer sector are by far the best place organisations to create a feeling of community and inclusivity through activity. We cannot impose solutions. What we can and should be doing is supporting our sports governing bodies and councils who in turn ensure local community initiatives like Dune Valley Boxing Club are properly resourced and finances, opening up opportunities and choice, irrespective of background or personal circumstances. Kids want to participate, but can only do so if the opportunities are there for them. The sense of community pride, parental pride and personal pride from the members is there for all to see, and that collective pride speaks to the health and well-being of that community. If we are serious about tackling the rise in inactivity, increasing health inequality, the widening attainment gap, and the rising poor mental health, if we are serious about tackling the obesity crisis, the rise in type 2 diabetes, musculoskeletal conditions, heart and lung conditions, then we need to look no further than the example being set by Dune Valley Boxing Club. In my view, sport is consistently undervalued and underfunded in this country. £34 million is the budget that Sports Scotland have been working with, representing one in five of the population who are members of sports clubs across all sports. What other portfolio delivers to so many of our nation with such a small budget? The sports governing bodies are being ever more stretched to deliver world-class sports opportunities through the club system, a, a system which is the lifeblood of Scottish sport and so often the centre of community activity. We shouldn't forget what the, men the medical profession continually tell us, that inclusivity, physical and mental activity are a major solution for treatment and prevention of poor mental health, not only for participants, but also for the army of coaches, officials and administrators that tirelessly keep the club system alive. And I've got to say, I'm hoping that the budget statement next week recognises the crucial part that sport plays in our nation's health and well-being, as well as its ability to build that important sense of community. We should also recognise the long-term positive impact on the health budget, on education, welfare and social behaviour. Presiding officer, with the aspiration and perspiration of their youngsters, the joy of participation, getting fit, learning movement skills, developing self-awareness, self-control and confidence, all of which are eminently transferable skills, what Dune Valley Boxing Club so ably demonstrates 
It's what is possible when the will is there. My favorite quote comes from Henry Ford when he said, believe you can or believe you can't and you will probably be right. Sam Mullen, his training staff, the parents and the community of Dunmelington certainly believe they could. What they have achieved and continue to achieve for the local community is a shining example of what is possible. We need to seek out, recognize and support all the Sam Mullins, all the Dune Valley boxing clubs in every community around the country who give so much of their time to help others. Now I wish them every success in the future and I promise I will see you for another session if you just give me a little bit of time to get a bit fitter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Colin Fulton-McGregor, be followed by John Scott. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to Brian Whittle for bringing this debate to the Chamber uh, and giving me the opportunity to speak on it. And also, I should say, well done to, to Dune Valley Boxing Club uh, and, and being recognised um, by Brian Whittle in the Chamber. Now, I'm not going to stand here and pretend to be any expert on boxing, but when I seen the, the debate on the agenda, I felt I had to take the opportunity as my constituency of Coat Bridge and Christ, and particularly the Coat Bridge part, has a very rich history in boxing. Um, and people may know that Ricky Burns, the current world number one WBA super lightweight title and, w and previous WBO super featherweight title and WBO lightweight uh, title um, is from Coat Bridge. And actually he's the first person from Scotland to hold three world titles, something that we in Coatbridge are all very, very proud of. And of course, this month he won the Scottish Sport Inspirational Performance Award. But mainly I would actually like to take this uh, four minute opportunity to talk about a place that helped produce Ricky Burns, a place very similar uh, by the sounds of it to the Dune Valley Boxing Club, and that's the, the Bannon Fitness Boxing Club in Coatbridge. Uh, Rab Bannon's a well-known face in Coatbridge. He's put 40 years of his life into the Baron ABC Boxing Club. Uh, with his family, including P Peter and Chris. And he's put a lot of time into the local people uh, of Coatbridge. He's recognised by parliamentarians, councillors, police officers, and the community at large as a positive influence on generations of young people in the area. He's well respected and loved by the people of the town. And as I've said already, has produced greats, including Lawrence Murphy and, of course, as I've said, Ricky Burns. The club, like by the sounds of it, Dune Valley, is an example of how a poor community can come together and better itself. With only the financial support of an annual community grant to pay for its rent and small membership fees, it puts everything it has straight back into the club. At its heart, it offers an alternative to the life of alcohol, drugs, vandalism and the culture of unemployment. The club teaches discipline, life skills, positive mental and physical health. And it can give the most vulnerable in society an identity and sense of purpose and a place in the community. And it can, as, as has been seen by the couple of examples I gave, change lives quite dramatically. Uh, the, the club itself has you know, a wide range of um, participants, five to 11 year olds, boys and girls, teenagers and adults. And, you know, and probably is working with an operation of about 50 or 60 active members at the moment. But more than that is the community engagement. In the last year alone, I've attended two events that the uh, club have put on at their base at the Langloan Health Centre um, and Fitness uh, Centre, where they have brought community together, kids' events, including face painting, football games. They had a, a Rangers versus Celtic uh, game on the, on the big pitch. Um, and all of this was to, one, bring the community together, but secondly, to raise a phenomenal amount of money uh, for charities, uh, SANS and Colitis. And and, and through doing that brought the community together. Fantastic days. Both days were absolutely um, but, uh, absolutely mobbed. Rab Bannon himself has been uh, recognised for his outstanding achievements in the world of boxing, where he was awarded uh, just very recently with the BBC Get Inspired Unsung Hero Award uh, in November 2015. And I'd, I'd like to finish just by saying that um, the, the boxing club is a great example of community engagement in the, in the Coat Bridge and Christon area. And it, is, it gives an example of, you know, Coatbridge Boy done good in Ricky Burns uh, and, and how uh, lives can be changed by such community involvement and selfless, dedicated volunteers giving themselves to the community for their, most of their life. And I'll finish on that. Cheers. Thank you. John Scott, 
followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I begin by congratulating Brian Whittle in securing this debate today on the Dune Valley Boxing Club and support what he said by way of commendation about the club. And may I also apologise to the Chamber for having to leave after speaking to meet with constituents. Presiding Officer, that the Dune Valley Boxing Club is a club that attracts members, male and female, from across Ayrshire is recognition and an achievement in itself. That the club attracts people from across southwest Scotland prepared to make the 110 mile round trip from Stranraer and elsewhere is little short of extraordinary and should be a source of pride to the club officials. While I don't believe, while I, don't believe I know Sam Mullen, his reputation travels before him and from all that I've read about him, he's obviously at the driving force behind the club's success. And success does not come easily in the Mellington, traditionally an Ayrshire mining village in the Dune Valley, where life was hard and for real every day for that mining and rural community. Close to Patna, a similar village where boys became men very quickly. Employment historically was either down the pits or on the farms. Little difference historically, both types of work being usually at best back-breaking, the major difference being one was above the ground and the other in the open air below the ground. Bar Hill, where I grew up, was a village not unlike De Mellington, but without the coal. So where Dune Valley, so when Dune Valley Amateur Boxing Club started in De Mellington 13 years ago, it did so in a post-mining era, but where life nonetheless was and remains hard. Open cast pits have come and gone, replacing traditional mining in East Ayrshire, and while some remain Communities of Bellsbank, Logan, Cumnock, New Cumnock, Rankiston, Drongan and Dalrymple, to name but a few, have a tradition of extracting a hard-fought living from an at best difficult environment and sometimes a downright dangerous and hostile one. But the Dune Valley Boxing Club offers hope. So little wonder the Dune Valley Boxing Club has prospered in its 13 years of existence. Little wonder that the club has so engaged with the wider Ayrshire community and little wonder that it has been so successful. Success, of course, can be measured in several ways. And firstly, let us acknowledge that this Demelington Boxing Club has produced a Youth Commonwealth Bronze Medalist, a very real achievement. And Brian Whittle, of all people, knows how hard it is to do this with or without footwear. <laughs> Then the club has also brought forward 30 young Scottish and six British champions, two in the past. And most recently, we have a new group of talented young people, as reported by Mike Wilson in the Daily Record in February of this year, when a gold medal was won by Donnie McPike in the Scottish Intermediate Championship at Ravenscraig. Silvers went to Keegan Maguire, Rhys Mitchell and Alan McGarvey, and they were coached by Sam Mullen and David McAnally. And these current successes tell us that the club is in good heart, that its proud 13-year history is not just being maintained but built upon, that its future is secure and that it and clubs like it across the Ayrshire will continue into the future, that Alex and Caroline Payton, who are sponsors of this club and whose fathers and grandfathers I know and knew, have supported wisely a club that embodies a gritty determination to succeed against the odds and that improves the life chances of its members. Clubs like the Dune Valley Boxing Club are a good example of what sports clubs across Scotland can do and achieve in terms of character building and development, even in this internet age. But they also demonstrate again the value of inspired leadership and role models for these boys and girls to follow. Sam Mullen has provided that and is now supported by David McAnally and Brian McCubbin and I congratulate them on their achievement and wish them well in the future. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Colin Smith, to be followed by Rachel Hamilton. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Can I echo the congratulations to, to Brian Whittle for bringing this motion before Parliament today and providing members with the opportunity to celebrate the outstanding work community sports clubs do in our constituencies and, and regions. Now, I recently had the, the pleasure of visiting Whitlet's Activity Centre in here with Mr Whittle, who, who kindly asked me to be part of the MSP team in a, a power chair football match, along with John Scott against the South Ayrshire Tigers. 
Now, I won't tell members what the result was, but uh, let's just say Mr Whittle won't be repeating his European Commonwealth Olympic track success in the sport of power chair football, and, and John Scott and I won't be giving up our day job soon. And, and judging by Mr Whittle's photos on Twitter of him lying flat and he's back in the ring at Doon Valley Boxing Club, he probably won't be taking up boxing anytime soon either. However, when we met with the players and coaches at, at, at South Ayrshire Tigers, and, and as we've heard today, when Mr Whittle met with the coach Sam Mullen and the kids at Doon Valley Boxing Club, it showed that the work our community sports clubs do really is truly inspirational. The boxing club in Dalmelanton may be small in size and numbers, but it's clear that it's punching well above its weight. The club's vision is to use their sport to, quote, change people's lives, to improve communities and change a nation. And as the motion before us today highlights, that is exactly what sports clubs across our communities do. A sports club teaches incredibly important lessons about life, about the joy of triumph, but also about learning to be resilient when we lose and to lose with grace, a bit like politics, I suppose. They also provide a platform for so many fantastic volunteers to contribute to their local areas. They help young people do well at school. They bring communities together with shared goals, strengthening local networks, reinforcing a sense of place and diverting young people away from crime. And of course, they give a positive opportunity for young people to improve their physical and mental health, which has never been more important than it is today. Since being elected to this parliament in May, I've had the, the privilege of being Labour spokesperson on public health and social care and also of serving on the health and sport committee. And this week, the committee held a roundtable discussion on probably the most pressing public health issue facing Scotland today, that of obesity. Two thirds of, two -thirds of Scotland's adults are now classed as being overweight and shamefully, almost a third of children are at risk of becoming overweight with children in Scotland more likely to be overweight than in any other part of the UK. And as I raised at the Health Committee this week, there's a clear link between obesity and deprivation, particularly among women and children. A quarter of children aged four to five from the most deprived areas are at risk of being overweight compared to around 18% of children from the least deprived areas. Now, what does this mean for our nation's health? Well, we know that obesity contributes to a whole number of health issues, type two diabetes, stroke, cancer, depression and anxiety, liver disease, osteoarthritis and back pain, asthma, reproductive complications and sleep apnea. In fact, obesity reduces life expectancy by an average of three years and severe obesity by between eight and 10 years. But obesity doesn't just have an impact on our health. It is associated with worse employment outcomes and is a source of unacceptable discrimination for applicants in the workplace. It also impacts on our public finances. Estimates by the Scottish Government in 2007-8 suggested that overweight and obesity combined were responsible for healthcare costs of £312 million. That's over £350 million at today's prices. Clearly, while dealing with diet and calorie intake is the most effective way to tackle obesity, physical exercise is also crucial. And that's why our sports clubs are so important to our nation's health and well-being. So I welcome the opportunity today, today to debate this issue and to place on record my support for sports clubs across the South Scotland and beyond. In particular, to say thank you to the army of volunteers that make them happen. But as Brian Whittle said earlier, we can do more than just express our support. We can provide practical help as well. I was elected to this parliament on a manifesto which included using the Barnet consequentials raised from the so-called sugar tax to invest £40 million into after-school sports clubs. That is a positive measure I'll continue to pursue so that our sports clubs can continue to do their outstanding work in all of our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Rachel Hamilton to be followed by the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to be speaking in Brian Whittle's sport-themed members debate today. I know from speaking to Mr Whittle that Doon Valley Boxing Club packs a punch in the small village of Dalmellington in Ayrshire. Since 2003, the club has produced 30 national champions, six British champions and a youth Commonwealth bronze medalist. The recognition received by clubs like these and individuals is undoubtedly deserved. The contribution that all coaches, officials and volunteers make across the country is truly exceptional and must not go unnoticed. This debate is testament to the hard work that goes into running sports clubs like Doon Valley Boxing Club. Let's take a closer look at the work of Sam Mullen, who established the boxing club. Sam opened the community gym after an injury forced him to retire. There are many ways to give back to your community, and one is to volunteer in sport. Without the generosity from volunteers, these clubs simply couldn't operate. 
It's volunteers like Sam and his team that help create the next generation of sporting stars. I, myself, am a volunteer netball coach, and I would encourage everyone to get involved. It's very rewarding. Crucial to the continuing success of boxing across Scotland is Boxing Scotland. It does great work throughout Scotland and continues to make boxing accessible and develop the sport, so all have the opportunity to reach their potential and works to create a strong boxing community. My colleague Brian Whittle briefly entered that community when he visited Dune Valley Boxing Club. Other than Colin Smith, I'm not sure if members were privy to the photographs of Brian Whittle visiting the boxing club. Brian, of course, is a decorated athlete himself and competed with the world's best. However, when he went pound to pound in this instance, his opponent at Dune Valley Club had the upper hand, showing that Brian is just a lightweight. On Sunday, I watched a programme called Fern Britain Meets. Fern met boxing legend and two-time world champion Nigel Benn. He spoke about his glittering career, but also shared his more troubled personal journey. Ben was a difficult teenager and a worry to his family. At 17, he was persuaded to join the British Army, where he became a first-class boxing, turning professional in 1987. Nicknamed the Dark Destroyer for his formidable punching power and aggressive fighting style, he won many titles and is ranked by BoxRec as the fourth, fourth best British super middleweight boxer of all time. His success demonstrates that activity in sport can turn lives around positively. Yesterday, I had a tweeting session with Josh Taylor, a professional boxer from Preston Pans in East Lothian. Josh was part of the Olympic boxing team in London. He also won a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow and turned professional in 2015. When he first started boxing, age 15, there was no boxing facilities in East Lothian, so he travelled here to Edinburgh. He told me that through his boxing, he learned discipline and respect, which kept him out of trouble. He said, quote, Boxing is great for that, unquote. One of the Dune Valley Club members is a pupil at Air Academy, a young lad with boxing talent called Donnie McPike. He is coached at Dune by Sam Mullen, who, of course, as we've said, has built an outstanding record of turning out champions over the years. Apparently, Donnie eats, sleeps and breathes boxing and wants to get right to the top of his game. This dedication to sport has seen him win a domestic treble, the Scottish Intermediate Championships, Western District Championships, and for the second year in a row, the Scottish title. Donny is the only Ayrshire boy to achieve this. These accolades highlight not only his talent, but also the value of the Dune Valley Boxing Club in the area. The boxing club facilitated Donny's talent to grow and develop. And this highlights the crucial role that these clubs play in the development of young sporting lives, providing an environment of encouragement and opportunity. Presiding officer, I would like to once thank Brian Whittle for bringing this debate forward, acknowledge the great work of the boxing club in Dune Valley, Dune Valley Boxing Club, and pay tribute to all those volunteers in all sports across Scotland that do so much for their respective clubs. Thank you. And I call on Eileen Campbell, Minister, to wind up. Thank you. And officer, and I too would like to thank Brian Whittle for raising this motion and for the contributions that we've heard from all parties and everyone uh, this afternoon. Um, we've heard today of the fantastic record of this small club, which is certainly uh, and literally punching above its weight. And I'd like to add my thanks to the coaches and the volunteers who help keep the club running, in particular, Sam Mullen, who sounds like an, a truly inspirational uh, character. Uh, and I certainly would be keen to, to, to meet with them or to visit, uh, try my own right hook, perhaps, as well, or is it maybe something I shouldn't do? It might be a wee bit different from the regular bouts that we experience uh, in this uh, chamber. But certainly, if, if, if time permits and there's opportunity arises, I would certainly be keen uh, to, to meet with the club. And I don't though, think it's uncomfortable, an uncomfortable issue for us as parliamentarians to hear that messages delivered through others, such as around healthy eating, discipline and activity, are more keenly heard when they're delivered through uh, sports uh, men and women. And that's the reach that I know that sport has. And it's that potential that I know that we must harness to transform lives. And it's through projects like what we've heard described as happening in Dalmelington or through whatever uh, club is familiar to all the members uh, across the chamber or in, indeed my own constituency of, of Bigger Rugby Club, which I'm a member of, which has delivered phenomenal results for many people across rural Lanarkshire 
or even through projects like the government support through football fans and training, which engages people, builds on community assets and empowers people to take control of their own lives. Because when we use sport to harness and transform lives, uh, that's when we see improvement and results and, and on those re results that we know uh, and the challenges that we know Scotland faces. And to, uh, this helps keep, uh, reverse some of those unfortunate trends around sedentary lifestyles in Scotland. Because sport and physical activity have been proven to improve both physical and mental health. Being active has many health and social and economic benefits and reduces the risk of over 25 chronic conditions. And it's also estimated that physical inactivity in Scotland results in around 2,500 premature deaths and costs our NHS around £94.1 million annually. And the tragedy of, of that is that the fact that oftentimes these uh, things are preventable. And for in terms of looking at what we have, the opportunities we have to provide for children, creating a culture in which healthy behaviours are the norm starts in the early years so that children and young people develop a lifelong habit of activity. Research shows that it's vitally important that children are active before they reach school age. And this can be through active play, which not only improves coordination, but also social skills with peers, with siblings, parents and grandparents, and nursery workers. And that was why we, in part, developed a play strategy, which I think flows seamlessly into the, the work that we're doing uh, in later years. Because once a child reaches school age, uh, and through investment by this government, 98% of schools now provide their pupils with two hours or two periods of physical education per week, a rise from less than 10% in 2004-05. But we can't be complacent and we'll continue to support Sport Scotland, Education Scotland and Scottish local authorities to maintain and improve the quality of PE provision and position within this within the government's overarching aims around raising uh, attainment. And outside of school hours, children can access the Active Schools programme. Since 2007, Sports Scotland has invested over 80 million in the Active Schools programme and will invest up to 50 million over the period 2015 to 19 across all 32 local authorities. And as a result, during the school session 2015-16, school pupils across Scotland made 6.5 million visits to active school sport and physical activity sessions, a record high number, which is a 7% increase on the previous 12 months. Figures also show that during that same academic year, the number of activity sessions offers has increased by 5% to 350,000, with a range of over 100 different sports and activities on offer. And of course, we've seen uh, an increase in the number of people delivering those sessions, with 19,000 of those uh, being volunteers. So the Active Schools programme also provides a helpful pathway into club sport to encourage children to continue with their sporting activities once they leave school. So that's a great foundation that we must build on if we want to see inroads made into the inactivity levels across our country. And one of the lasting legacies of the 2014 Games is the development of community sports hubs. And Scotland can now boast ha of having uh, 157 of these hubs, which brings together local clubs to work together in the way that best suits local circumstances, with many of those hubs based in local schools. And Sports Scotland has also announced a further six million investment to create a total of 200 hubs by 2020. Um, and perhaps Colin Smith might be interested to know that my letter of direction to Sports, uh, Sports Scotland is also around looking at ways in which we can increase that, uh, uh, the enhance that provision in areas of deprivation. So, but it's important that we remember that Scotland's sedentary lifestyle is about more than just sport, it's about activity more generally. And that's why our support for Paths for All and our dedication to walking through our national strategy has seen an increase of 5% in this free of charge activity. We're also investing in active uh, travel and also through um, the spirit of 2012, we're investing in collecting data about work, what works in getting our inactive population active. And yesterday I was impressed by the work that's happening in Edinburgh Leisure, which is truly targeting and, and, and going in to engage with the community about trying to figure out what they need to do differently in order to get their inactive population active. And that's across all ages. Miles Briggs. Um, to the different groups which the Minister's highlighted during this debate. One group which I think all of us are aware of are Jog Scotland, who are trying to do exactly what the Minister's outlined these other groups are doing. They've now seen all their funding cut. Can the Minister take forward a review of that to see if we can see how they can also provide this physical exercise we're all wanting to see, which they're now saying they're going to have to scale back on? Minister. Well, we're 
always looking to see what ways we can improve on situations. I, I certainly know that the work that JOG Scotland continues to do uh, as well uh, is recognised and is um, uh, appreciated. But also, I think, you know, it, we, we need to look at the, the, the whole picture, and that's why we're investing in things like uh, Paths for All to encourage people to take up that free of charge activity and making sure that we celebrate the fact that a 5% increase in walking across Scotland doesn't happen by accident, but that's through the investment and through the dedication and the focus that we've had through our national walking strategy. But as others have said, sports for, sport for change, it's the, the ability that sport has to reach into our communities, to transform lives, to engage with people uh, uh, and to help, uh, help the government more generally uh, tackle issues around inequality, around health and wellbeing, about uh, employability, all of those things have a, a reach which sport can help with and help us transform lives and transform our communities. And that's why it's important that we continue to have a focus and continue to understand that reach more generally. And that's why uh, through working with the Scottish governing bodies, we're continuing to work with them to see if they can have more rigour and robustness around the figures that which they have so that we can truly tell that story much more powerfully across our country. So in summing up, uh, presiding officer, sport has a phenomenal reach that we need to harness and we need to use that uh, reach to transform lives. And I'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate everybody involved at Dune Valley Boxing Club for the work that they're doing uh, to transform lives in their local area. And like others have said already, I'd like to pay tribute to the volunteers who are providing opportunity and happy memories for children and young people right across our nation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our debate and I now suspend Parliament until 2.30.